scams cheat elderly Americans out of $3 billion a year. One in 10 Americans 65 years of age or older will become a victim. Romance scams cause the largest average loss. Well, unfortunately, Garfield County is no different than anywhere else in the world. We have all sorts of scams um, in all, you know, all various forms, um, all targeting the vulnerable and the elderly. Elderly people sometimes can be more trusting than um, uh, others. They tend to possibly have more financial assets too. And in this day and age of the internet, people can find out a huge amount of information. Some of the scams targeting seniors include sweepstake scams. My grandfather, he was called by the publisher's clearinghouse saying that he had won this money. And when we tried calling them back, the number was no good. Grandparent scams. Sometimes we will get someone that calls into the sheriff's office and, and they're like, hey, I've got someone calling me. They're claiming that they're my grandchild. I know they're not, but they're trying to scam me out of money. Lawsuit or arrest threats. As the sheriff and my deputies, we are not going to call you and tell you that you have a warrant for your arrest. We're not going to ask you to pay for your fines over the phone. Romance frauds. One way that they get you through, um, through the dating apps, um, they ask you then, you know, can, can I email you or to text, but they'll never want to talk. The ask for money doesn't happen until later. They want to get you comfortable and, and trust them before they start opening up and asking for financial assistance. If you are on social media, the best thing is to look at the privacy settings. Make sure you're protecting yourself before you, you know, put all your information out there. Fake social security calls and identity theft. Anytime someone is contacting you from out of the blue, um, somebody that you don't know, um, then you should be suspicious about ever giving them any personal information at all. Um, one good, one, one good um, technique is to say, can I have your name and number and I'll call you back um, and then check into them um, or contact the company that they claim to be from um, so, that, uh, so that you can have some sort of verification because most, most scammers, that'll be the end of it. When you happen to uh, check on your email accounts, uh, text messages, if you don't recognize the sender, don't open it up. This big email saying, oh my gosh, you better click here and you're past due or you have something very traumatic going on, um, the first thing to do is to look at who sent you the email. We also need to be very uh, careful with our passwords and we need to regularly change passwords that we use. Um, and anytime you think that you may there's even a possibility that someone may have your personal information. We need to immediately change our passwords. If, so if you ever receive an you know, email, text message, phone call, Facebook message, whatever it may be, never give them your pertinent information. To protect yourself and avoid becoming a victim of a scam, question companies' claims motives. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. If we have somebody that we believe may uh, be a target or maybe is being scanned, uh, we need to gently engage them in a conversation. And in that conversation, we need to make sure that we keep in mind that two of the most prominent feelings that victims have are shame and embarrassment. And, and people who have been victimized, I mean, they're not alone. I think that with our greater levels of connectivity um, through the internet and through electronic data, um, I really think it makes all of us a target at any given time. If someone does feel like they've been victimized, please contact RSVP and then uh, we'll take down that information um, in a very low key manner and then we will be able to bring it to the Elder Abuse Task Force and then we can present that information then to the DA and the police and then prosecution after that will happen. Uh, we also work very hand in hand with Adult Protective Services, APS. Um, so even if um, you know it's a family member that it has a concern, they can reach out to APS as well. Um, they do participate in the Elder Abuse Task Force, so they are amongst that table. And so that way, um, all of those cases go to through the proper channel. So often we will have you as an individual call like uh, the Oklahoma Attorney General's Office, 1-405-521-3921. You know, you, you definitely want to report it to someone because if we don't know what's happening, we won't know to try to help fix it. You know, the elderly and vulnerable among us um, are people that we should take particular care of, um, and we need to do everything we can to make sure 
um, that, that we're watching over them um, and that they're not being victimized. And if we find out that they are, uh, then it's time for our community to rally um, and to help them and to come together to make sure that, that they understand that um, they're not alone, um, that it's not their fault, um, there's no reason to feel shame um, or guilt. So that's really the, the overarching message that we, want, that we want to get out, that there are resources available, there are people out there that want to help. If you or someone you know suspects they are a victim of a scam, contact RSVP 580-233-5914. The Enid Police Department 580-242-7000 or the Garfield County Sheriff's Office 580-237-0244.